Hey guys, how are you? Feeling good? Awesome. Do you know what it is? It's a camera. I'm actually recording you guys. So drop your laptops, drop your iPhones, and listen. And this was a hook right now. So I hope I got your attention, and now it's on me to keep that attention. So let's fucking go. So a little bit about me. Um, I'm from Slovenia, a very small country from Europe, and basically I run a performance agency that is very focused on the creatives, and we offer creative strategy, creative analysis, and of course content production. We have a team of, I don't know, around 80 content creators right now, mo mainly focused on, let's say, on, on US market. Uh, but we also have an uh, in-house studio where we actually combine that into performance creative. Uh, my background is I was a media buyer, but I was always very, very focused on the media buying part and on the creative part. So I noticed that even like five years ago, if you didn't have good creatives, it was very hard uh, to do something. So and now with iOS 14 and everything, now there's even bigger. Um, so I started with my family business, I took them online and we basically scaled across European markets and then uh, I, I switched to more like uh, agency life and I worked for two agencies, one of them was from New York, the other one was Sacramento and I was doing media buying, creative strategy and then slowly I transitioned on my own and yeah, now we have a creative agency. So basically, I'm very active on Twitter. So if you guys want to get some creative tips or uh, want to engage with me, want to ask me some question, just scan the QR code and you will get a lot of uh, e e interesting insights. But now let's go to the fun part. Why do you think the creative is important? Oh, good engagement. Awesome. Like I would say, creative is actually your targeting or if I go a little bit deeper hook is your targeting you actually stop the scroll with a hook that it's relevant and basically imagine that you have a lower back problem and the hook actually shows that back problem you will stop the scroll because it's relatable to you so that's how you actually target through creatives so I'm gonna talk about a little bit of creative benchmarks, so soft metrics that are also very relatable to the performance metrics. Then I'm gonna talk about how I do creative analysis. I will share some script formulas. And in the end, I will give you like top five uh, video ad hooks that you basically can implement tomorrow and you will have pretty good results. Okay, so first I wanna talk about hook ratio and video retention or hold ratio inside the video. So I think that everyone knows here what the hook is and what's the metrics, but I'm still gonna share it with you guys. But what comes after the hook is actually even more important. So here are the two metrics that we really use a lot. And this is what happens after the hook. So you have a hold rate for 15 seconds. And that means how many people out of those who stop the scroll are actually watching at least 15 seconds. So the next one is 75%. Those are more for a longer form videos, which means that, of course, if you have a 20 second video, those metrics are gonna be the same. But if you have a video that's like 50 seconds long, then of course 75% is much longer. Now then, you need to think about the hook versus hold rate ratio. So in this scenario, you see that we stopped like over half of people, but we also retained them for at least 15 seconds. So this ratio is actually very good because this was also very good performance because the point of soft metrics is it needs to be relatable to the performance. Sometimes like people are discussing like CTRs that doesn't matter at all. It's true, but those metrics, if I filter like by 
top head spenders, like especially hold rate for 15 seconds, it's very relatable to the performance. Now you go a little bit deeper if you have a long form video and especially be focused on the ratio between 15 seconds and 75%, which means this video was around, I think it was 52 seconds. So um, you see, I barely lost anyone inside the video. So that means what I did, I actually analyzed that video, what is going on inside from the creative perspective so I can understand the audience and I can iterate on those ads. Now, what is, why is this so important? So, you know, we are very, everything is crowded on Facebook, on TikTok, and we need to get attention. And like, people are talking, you need a good hook and good call to, call to action and that's it. But it's not true. It's very important what happens after the hook. Because you need to build that desire. You need to, you kind of, if you have like a good video, the quality of your audience will land on your website. It's going to be much higher than you just, if you just trick them with call to action. So a couple of benchmarks. My hooks are usually, I mean, 30, 35% is kind of a minimum. Uh, I want to be over 40% almost all the time but you need to keep in mind that if you are over 55 percent almost all the time those hooks are actually clickbaity so that means that you just make some weird visuals or you made some reverse stuff that it's very engaging but it's not related to the to the audience it's not related to the product it's not related to your problem so that means you kind of trick them and you lost them so you can share with your client, oh, we have a great hook, uh, the, the product is the problem, but it's not true. It can be the second part of the video that it's the problem. Then one thing, if you combine, if you compare problem-focused and benefit-driven uh, hooks, you need to know, at least from what I'm seeing on uh, accounts that we are running, is basically problem-focused hooks are usually better with the hook ratio, but not necessarily with the performance like the best hook if you would ask me right now is gonna be show the product and the main benefit in the first five seconds and if you show that in a very visual way that's pretty safe bet it's gonna work then if we talk about hold hold benchmarks like 20 percent is is okay uh we aim we right now our 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 hold ratios right now are around i would say 25 percent but we are always aiming to get bigger and bigger and better. So 30% should be a minimum next year. Then I was talking a little bit about hook and hold relationship. And as I said, it's not always about the hook. Hook needs to be relatable, which means we will talk about, about this and script structures from now on. So what you do, you put on the media buying glasses, you filter by top of the funnel, you filter by ad spend, so you get top spenders, and then you look at the, the best hooks, the best hold rates, and what's more importantly, the best hook with the best hold rates. Because sometimes you will see very good hold rate, and then you look at the hook, and you kind of see, okay, those hooks are relatable, now I need to tweak those hooks to be even better. Then you put the creative glasses on, and you need to understand those metrics. So let's check the first example. You have a hook 51% and your hold rate is 7%. What does that mean? First, you trick them or actually your hook is very good and people click through in the first 15 seconds so the hold rate is gonna look back, but you actually, I don't know, convert them in 10 seconds, which is like what we always want, but it's pretty hard to do. So. That means you always need to look, not just look at the data, but also need to have like that creative glasses on because that's how you understand everything. Then hooking hook relationship, is it clickbait or you just trick them? I talk about that. Now you need to think about is the, hook, is the script after the hook good enough? Are the visuals good enough? Is the pacing engaging? All of those stuff needs to be looked at from the creative perspective um, and you need to know, learn how to do that. Then, yeah, what you can do, you change the hook because even if the hook is 51%, you can, 
you can change it and maybe the hook is going to be, I don't know, 42%, but the hold ratio is going to extend because your hook will become much more relatable and people will watch the video longer and you also like, you're going to target like more relevant audience. The second thing that you can do is basically um, change the body of the video because, um, yeah, you can change the pacing, visuals, change the persona and then all of a sudden also the hold rate is going to improve. Now let's look at a couple of examples. Now if you look at this video you see the hook is very good, hold rate is also very good and you see the other soft metrics were actually really good and all of those videos that I'm going to show here actually have good performance. So I'm not going to show you videos that have like very good soft metrics just to look at cool but also it has good performance which is very of course we want performance not just like some engaging videos so if you look at this video i will give you a little bit of background so we actually had this backpack brand and basically when i got that uh, product and we were thinking about how we're going to shoot content that's a little bit outside the box i actually say man this this backpack looks so cool i, I, I hope nobody will steal it from me and that was actually the idea of the concept i'm gonna stole this video this uh, backpack you're gonna see how we start the video and the video looks like it doesn't look like an ad in the beginning and then when we actually get attention like for the 10 seconds then we can afford to our ad to become a little bit more uh, let's say direct response because you get the attention then you can show an ad let's check it out Okay, so let's go to another one. This one also has a very good uh, soft metrics and here we actually educate. So this brand, they, they manufacture, they sell smoothies in a powder. So basically the bad alternative of this product is actually old fashioned um, smoothies, which is like, it's very healthy, but it, it takes very long time to, to produce. So we try to point, paint a picture like how much time you spent making a smoothie before you even get that meal and how I can transition that to our product, which is like very much more convenient. There was no call to action in the, in, in the end because the client demands that. I usually put the call to action just to clarify. Uh, now let's look at the good hook but bad hold example. Now I'm going to first show you the video and then I'm going to explain why in my opinion hold rate is so bad. circles under that. I didn't know that people don't really know about it. Okay, so here you saw the hook that it's very native, very interesting, but then the rest of the video was like more polished stuff. So it kind of disconnect. There's, there was a disconnect between hook and the rest of the video. So now what I can do next? So the first thing that I would do, I would use the same person in a hook and then after the hook. So it's more relatable to the audience. So everything comes from the same person. Then also the visuals should be more native. The editing should be more native because everything 
looks like a hole. So that's how I would improve um, this situation. Now, let's go a little bit deeper. So here, I'm going to talk about script structures. Now, now you're going to see how I analyze when I get this data. So here is one situation that we did. So you see, this is a script structure situation of two videos. One of them is UGC mashup, and the other one is branded voiceover ad. So UGC mashup had better CTR and better average watch time. So hook was pretty similar, but the other soft metrics were actually better. The performance of both ads was actually profitable at pretty high scale, but still the right uh, video was better performer. But what I wanted to do is combine those two together and make it even better. So the brand that, um, do you see any difference between the left and the right um, structure? So I'm gonna help you guys. So you see, we have the positioning and we have the objection handling. So this is actually the main direct response elements that we don't have on the left video. The left video was engaging, fun, a lot of reactions. Of course, people like to watch it. But the second video was more like branded, but it was more direct response focused. That's why the performance was better. So how I improved that? So I did a mashup, which is more engaging, but I also added those two elements in there. And this was the video that we did. So these are my pivot shoes. You don't tie, you don't pull on them, no heel crushing, no hands. And once they're on, they stay on. And this technology in the back makes the heel pop up. So like you don't have to bend down. They are really friendly for people of all abilities. Time to step up your shoe game and step into physics. Okay, so let's dive into script structure for that video. I started the video with benefit, uh, like the main value prop. Basically, I stepped in the, in, in the shoe, which is the main value prop. Then I showed the reaction. Reactions are always very good for keeping attention. So sometimes you can put a reaction in for, in, uh, as a hook, but that could trick people. But if you make a hook that it's more relatable and then you add a reaction, it kind of puts people out of their seat. It, it, like the pacing go up and down, fast, slow. And basically because of reaction, your average watch time can expand. Uh, and not, don't just put reaction like in the first part of the video, also put it like after 15 seconds, 25 seconds to extend that. Uh, then of course we introduce the product then we depositioned the competition, so you saw that comparison when we showed the regular shoes and those Kizik's, and you basically, actually, with depositioning, you actually show, oh, oh yeah, that's actually my struggle. I really hate that, because people like, when they are putting their shoes, they don't even care anymore um, with that issue, but if you show that to them, then they start thinking, you kind of make a problem for them. Then, of course, you talk about a little bit of demonstration, technology, education, and then some persona-specific visuals. Now, if you, saw, if, you saw, if you noticed in the end of the video, there was like a pregnant lady stepping in. So there was like a persona-specific visuals, and then you can show that situation on the airport or uh, when you're taking out the garbage. So you, you show that different situations, and then all of a sudden people will say, oh, this is for me. So here are my top three script structures that you can basically copy paste implement in your videos and you basically can start running completely fresh new eye i'm gonna wait so you can show it cool you're gonna get those slides anyway so yeah cool okay so now in the end i'm gonna share five video ad hooks that you can basically implement immediately and i will also give you a backstory of at each hook so you kind of see my thinking behind it because that's actually the most important thing you need to know why i created that hook so the first one 
this was probably my favorite hook of this year and stop scroll ratio on like on TikTok at some point was like 70%. Of course, on TikTok is easier because it's two seconds, it's not three seconds, but still amazing hook. Um, and why does this work? It's countdown. So that means you kind of spark curiosity and people like want to wait and see what will happen. So let's check it out. No heel crushing, no hands. Boom, right on, no hands. Great job, physics. Okay, now let's go to the another one. This one is a problem focused hook. Of course, like probably everyone knows that you need to start with a problem a lot of times, but still think how you can create that hook. Like the main value prop of this coffee brand was freshness. So they kind of say your coffee sucks because it's like five months old and it's lying on the shelves and our coffee is fresh. It's like three to five days. So what I wanted to do is how I can create that problem that it's visual and I create, I threw my caric away. So our, I, I threw my coffee machine away. Why? Because I didn't enjoy my coffee anymore. So that is how I reverse engineer the hook and let's check it out. Now one thing I want to add here, if you notice the pacing of the visuals, basically every two seconds something change. Like there's not static video like for five seconds, that's boring, you're going to lose them. If you don't have visuals that can go back and forth, you can play with zoom in and zoom out effect. Like every two seconds you slightly zoom in, you can, it's kind of more engaging and you, it will um, help you with your average watch time. Now the next one is ASMR hook. So ASMR is basically very satisfying videos. There's no voiceover, no music, basically the sound effects or the cutting stuff or the, the other sensible uh, reactions. And you will see uh, what I'm talking about. So one thing that I want to point out here, did you notice the first frame of the video? The camera angle was inside the box. So it was completely different. Again, think about when you're making a shot, how I can make that shot, not from my perspective, but maybe from a different perspective. Or let's say right now we are working on ads for diapers. And basically one video is going to be actually from a baby perspective. So it's going to be low camera angle. It's going to be pointing up when mother is looking down. So the angle, the visuals are going to be completely different. And this is what I always try to do. I always want to go outside the box because otherwise every creator looks the same. And we want to be different because we want to stand out. Now the next one, it's all about weird visuals. Like if you have a product, think what you can do with that product. And you will see, you, you can actually see Right now, we reversed that visual and we were playing with texture of this, um, of this brand. And basically, you also be focused what happens after the hook because there's a lot of editing in behind. Most of my puffiness 
this, the morning after, is in my cheeks and right here in the middle of my face. Yes, it cures masculine. I don't know how many times me or the ladies have to tell you. Okay, and now the last one, curiosity hook. This one, it's kind of connected with that countdown. It sparks the same emotion, curiosity, but you see the headline, she's afraid, will she do it? Like the main objection for this brand, because they put this device on their hand is, does it hurt? So we want to fight that objection immediately. And also visually, it's like, what is going on? So it's very attention grabbing. So, and you will also see, this is like a very genuine reaction from the creator. So it helped a lot with this hook. Check it out. Okay, so if you see the pattern in those hooks, all those hooks are very native. It doesn't look like a net in the beginning. Then when I get their attention, I can afford to educate them to be more direct response and actually sell. As I said, like all of those ads were performing really well, some at a little bit lower scale, some of them at like a very high scale. And yeah, some of the brands here we work on, like they're spending like 50K a day. So at bigger scale, like the creative needs to be next level. And yeah, that's about it. Now, as I said, if you have any questions, if you wanna connect, here's my Twitter, like you will see a lot of useful information such as this thing there. And yeah, that's it.